Hi, I'm Zoe with the Kakushu Parish Public Library, and today we'll be doing an easy printmaking process using acrylic paint and stencils. To do this project with me today, you'll need some cardstock or a thick paper, some paint, I'm using acrylic today, you'll also want a craft blade so you can cut out your stencil, and a paint sponge or some other sort of applicator. Printmaking can refer to a variety of methods, but it's basically transferring a design from one surface to another. Now, these are two examples that I did when I was testing out this project. So the first thing you'll need is a design. I've pulled some simple copyright-free designs to use for my stencils today, like this cute cat image, but whatever design you choose, try to keep it simple. Simple shapes and limited colors. You're going to need multiple copies of your design, generally speaking, one copy per color. So this image has four main colors, so I'm going to need four copies, and we're going to build up the image from the background to the foreground. For the first layer, I only cut out the section that was the white of the fishbowl. The next section, I only cut out what was going to be the blue of the fishbowl. The third layer, um, I actually have two areas that are yellow, so I cut out the fish as well as the table. And for our fourth and final layer, I cut out the black cat. This is the rose design that we'll be doing today. You can see that it's mainly composed of three colors, so we'll be building it up in three layers. I've already printed out and prepared the stencils, so let's get started. We're going to be working from the outside of our rows towards the center, so my first stencil is the leaves. I'm going to carefully set it down. Since my stencils are about the same size as my canvas, they'll be easy to line up. But you could also use painter's tape or another marker to make sure each stencil sits in the exact same place. You can see on this layer I've only cut out the leaves, and I've found this really vibrant green that I think is going to work really well. I'm using a children's sponge to gently dab paint onto the cutout area. Um, don't drag your sponge around, just use these vertical, gentle movements to apply the paint. Once this layer is done, I'm going to remove the stencil and I'm going to let the leaves dry completely before I move on. Our next layer is this light pink. Um, you can see the color that I mixed up here, I think it's really pretty. Now these petals are a lot thinner. So you can see me moving my hands around and applying pressure to the stencil in the areas where I am applying paint because I don't want any paint to slide under the stencil. I don't want the stencil to move around um, and mess up my design. We're still dabbing paint vertically on there. We don't want to brush it. Again, that'll sort of make it bleed under the edges. And once this is all done, we can lift it off and let it dry. This will be our final layer. I need to be extra careful lining this one up because ideally I shouldn't have any white space where the light and dark pink meet in my petals. Here's the pink that I have mixed up and we can start applying it. One thing I noticed here is that my sponge is a little too wet. I used it to mix the paint and I didn't get enough of the paint off of it before I started applying it to the stencil. And it's going to cause some problems. When I lift this stencil off, you can see that the paint sort of bled under the edges a little bit, and so my edges aren't as clean as I wanted. They're still pretty, but it's a good idea to get any excess paint off of your brush. Just keep that in mind. So here is the reveal. This is what our final rose is going to look like. We'll let that dry, and then we'll look at it again. Here are my finished pieces side by side. Now that the rose is dry, I'm actually pretty happy with it. You can see a little bit of texture in there from the sponge brush. It turned out pretty well. I hope you enjoyed this project, and check back every week for more videos from the Calcasieu Parish Public Library.